Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bang. Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson, available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. I'm going to say it right now. A hot episode of Dynamite tonight, Larson. Hey-o! Sorry, I'm the big dummy for that one. Big dummy. Uh, featured uh, tonight, of course, in the main event, a killer street fight, an Atlanta street fight between Cody Rhodes and Andrade that culminated in a flaming table spot courtesy of Brandy Rhodes. <laughs> Yeah, to say that was unexpected, that is an understatement. It was shocking. It was awesome. And, uh, and yeah, it punctuated in a, a match that had such a crazy, interesting crowd reaction in that everybody in that arena seemed to have an opinion on Cody Rhodes. There were loud boos and there were loud cheers. And it really, I thought, enhanced the atmosphere um, and, and punctuated a pretty damn fun episode of Dynamite. Yeah, it was it was it was a pretty solid episode. Uh, the crowd did get into the main event. They were somewhat subdued for the most part throughout the show. They would get into it at moments, but you know, I I think we've come to expect, dare I say, have become a bit spoiled with crowds at AEW shows who are into the show from the opening bell to the finish. You know, I've um, I've noticed some chatter on Twitter during the show that there might have been. Uh, maybe some miking issues with the crowd. That could have been the situation here. Um, I, I do. I feel like they 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 were especially noisy for the bigger moments of the show, like the finish of the of the Punk Moriarty match, which was a killer was match. Really was I really mean, good. what a great showing for Lee Moriarty. Mm-hmm. Um, he's terrific. Uh, the the finish to Ruby versus Chris, another uh, Chris match. Statlander. Another great match with a great finish. I wish actually they would have had that match go a little bit longer. To be honest yeah, with yeah, you, yeah. I could have used more of that. Um, and they they got up for that. But uh, but yeah, I wonder if some of that might have been Mike. Sometimes look, sometimes you just don't get a crowd that is is all loud and stuff. But uh, but yeah, no for for that match, they seem to really want to uh, have their voice heard. Yes, yes, for sure. So let's 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 talk about this this table spot. Completely unexpected to say the least. Um. I broached this subject during our pre-show, and you told me just to kind of like roll with it. But, if, <laughs> but we're we're going to talk about it regardless. So please, yes, absolutely. So uh, Cody obviously is disqualified from contending for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship at any point in, uh, in his career going forward, unless he turns heel and 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 tries to go against that. So whenever I see Cody like he is now in a bit of a push because obviously he's putting some wins together. He's mm-hmm. made evented, I think a couple dynamites in a row I read mm-hmm. on Twitter. Um, what's the end game to this? Like, is it just mm-hmm. for him to get the TNT title back? Seems unlikely. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if they're featured, I know the story is <laughs> Cody kind of uh, uh, finding himself again, becoming a world-class competitor yet again. I understand mm-hmm. that. And he's busting out flaming table spots. Obviously, this is where he's headed. But part of that story, you'd think, if you want to be the best, part of that is then you got to have the gold that says you're the best. And if he just wins the TNT title, not to, I'm not disrespecting the TNT title, he's, but he's won it twice already. You know? Yeah. I just don't know where this is going. There's that. And also, I don't understand what they're doing with Andrade. He can't buy a win. It's yeah. strange. Yeah. Yeah, so when when you had initially said, I don't know where this is going, I thought you more you meant more in a nebulous sense of like what Cody's character is kind of all no, about. I which get is that. still I get that. It's, I get well, even that is still kind of nebulous. I get the larger me. arc they're telling now. Yeah. Yeah. Um as far as what his endgame is, I don't know, man. Because here's the thing. 
I, I, I do believe, you know, for a spell there in early AEW, Cody was one of the guys who was uh, just really good without titles. He could tell some really pretty compelling stories. Uh, and then pandemic hurt and, uh, hit and, and things seemed to go a little weird. Like he seemed to isolate himself uh, and, and his stories. And hence, that's where we get the Cody Island term from. He just seemed to be separate from everybody else. Um, now he does seem to be. I mean, granted, he's not in anything with like the elite or I mean, for right now, anyways, hangman. But yeah, I get what you're saying in that you would think after a match like this, he would come out next week on Dynamite with Mike in hand and start insinuating that he's going to go after some gold or something, or he'll have something on his agenda. You do think that there there should be some goal for him to have in mind. Um, it I, I don't think that he's going to do a switcheroo and go after the AEW title. I think that there are, there's like four other people. There's, there's, there are so many people that probably they, they have, they're, they're looking at for that title at this point, including probably the next guy is going to be Adam Cole. It's so funny how like there's that, you know, the, the, the unnecessary chatter in social media about how, Oh, look at how they're using Adam Cole. It's so ridiculous. It is. Because they said the same thing about Miro. And to be honest with you, we kind of said the same thing about Miro. And look how that turned out. But the bottom line is Adam Cole is probably going to be the next AEW champion. It seems like we, uh, well, we have a pause here. The bald monkeys just raided with Party of Seven. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very um, much. Yeah, and this, this is not something that AEW does with everybody. But to, to varying degrees, they do. They have a, a huge name come in. I feel like uh, Danielson's kind of the exception where he shot, uh, shot up directly the main event. Yeah. But even Punk, you know, you think, oh, huge profile signing like CM Punk. You want, you're going to push him immediately. And they haven't done that. They bring mm, in yeah. free agents, and by and large, they don't push them straight to the main event. Yeah. You know, they yeah. have some stories that build up to that. Yeah. Which I appreciate. I, there, there's, a different, there's, there's a different dynamic in AEW yeah. where it, it seems to be like, dude, you saw that Moriarty match tonight with mm-hmm, Punk. Mm-hmm. Punk was doing everything to make him look better. There just seems to be some goodwill backstage where the goal seems to be push the company, push the uh, push the future, have fun, um, appreciate what you have. Danielson's going to lose at Winter Wonder Slam. We all know that. I don't know when he's going to get back into the title scene because you've got probably Adam Cole on deck next. After that, I could see it. Uh, I don't know. You got a guy like MJF who clearly within the next three years is going to be champion. Wouldn't shock me, although I don't think he needs it, but Darby Allen at some point in the next four years is going to be champion. Yeah. You got Steen probably coming in in a couple months. Um, I will say so this. I, I will say this. So far, basically all the ti- the world title reigns have been lengthy. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to see Danielson one year after Kenny cheated to win the title against Mox, mm-hmm. roughly one year, and that's not one year to the day, um, yeah, sure. at the same event to bend the rules and somehow beat Hangman, and they could tell the story. Okay, Page is champion now. Now he has to learn how to be champion. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think, it would be I think, interesting. I think what, if sorry, we get one last point out. Mm-hmm. I think the one thing that that really benefited Hangman over the last two years, especially the last few months, is the chase. Mm-hmm. And and I know he just won it, but if he's cheated out of it and has to chase again. Yeah. Um. And either get it back at. I mean, battle of the belts might be too soon, but not necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the yeah. Rock and Mankind traded that belt a couple times in a yeah. very short amount of time. Oh yeah. Or sure. if you want to wait till Revolution, whatever. But you kind of get. You can kind of have your cake and eat it too. You can potentially tell a good story. You get Danielson a short title reign, mm-hmm. and then in theory, if you do it right, you can build up Hangman even more. Yeah. Yeah, you stack the odds yeah. against them, have them overcome the odds, get that belt back. It's possible. I I wonder if it would take a little bit. I I personally think that would take the wind out of his sails a little bit. I would I would suggest this. I think that they could do. What are we in? We're in December right now. Mm-hmm. I would think my my guess and little plug. I got a video going up tomorrow on Wrestle Juice where I say who my next four are going to be, and I'll give you a little preview of that. The first guy is Adam Cole, and it happens, it happens at double or nothing, which is only six months away. I mean, that's not that long away. And then they they run it back, and Hangman gets it back. And then I you know, tell you who my next three are. Um, and it's because Hangman takes on a series of opponents who are solo acts. Maybe he goes through Miro. He goes through uh, 
maybe he has like a punk defense, you know, he goes through a couple of Lance Archer when he heals up, he goes through some solo guys and, but Adam Cole with Kenny gone. And then maybe with the arrival of like a uh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, he sort of puts together like, and Steen, he puts together like a whole ensemble of like all of his greatest hits. He has the undisputed era and he's got, uh, the Mount elite Rushmore. with him in the Mount yeah. Rushmore. Yeah. Exactly. So he's just surrounding himself with all these guys. And that the numbers game ends up being too much for Hangman. Kenny comes back and he guides Hangman on the path to getting the title back. And so there's a it, the title reign is just it's it's you're right. They they do need to cut it out with these year long title reigns. And I get the feeling they're going to do the Hangman. I just wonder if you do it so soon, it would take the wind out of his oh, sails. It's entirely possible. But remember that they know. had that elimination tag match where page and the dark dark order against the elite and we we're like okay mm-hmm. this is where page gets his, his guaranteed title shot and we were all expecting mm-hmm. we, you know i think we did predictions for the show and we all had tons mm-hmm. of confidence points on page winning yeah and then yeah. he didn't yeah true. yeah you know and even then we we're like okay have they changed plans you know is this yeah. going to take the wind out of the sails the answer to that ended up being no you mm-hmm. know so if they do it right it's i'm not saying it's gonna happen i'm just i just think that there's a possibility exists that it could happen yeah, well, I mean, look, if, if if I were to trust any wrestling promotion with doing it properly, it would totally be AEW. It, it totally could happen. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that being said, getting back to Cody, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Like, you know, I do think that he can tell some really great stories. I do think that maybe he might think the Malachi thing is still out there and you're going to have a real... Cody win against Malachi now that he went through Andrade because he has to survive. He has to get through Malachi like in a real blow off fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he just gonna um, let Malachi like miss him right in the mouth or something, and then just like swallow uh, it and then and then win there? I'm boosted. It's okay. Um, yeah, I yeah maybe I don't know. I mean tonight this is pretty nuts. This is a flaming table. Yeah, I didn't expect um, that. Didn't yeah. Expect so uh, so I don't know how they can uh, how can they how they can top that, but. I don't know. There's so much. There's so many moving parts in AEW that, uh, I mean, hell, I don't know. He 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 runs it with Malachi. Maybe that happens at well, Full Gear is too is too far away. Maybe that happens at uh, Winter is coming. The fir- uh, or the first the first uh, uh, AEW TBS show. That's about a month away. That's Battle of the Belts. I don't know if that's just like all champions or not. Oh, is that no Battle of the Belts is on a Saturday though. I was talking about the first TBS Dynamite. That's oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. the Wednesday before. Yeah, so that maybe that's going to be a big deal. They'll do it there. No, what did I say? Full, I said full game. I meant Revolution. Sorry, that's like in late February, early March. Febu- uh, yeah, February, some point. Last March. time it was March third, but I think usually it's at the like the first one was at the end of February. Yeah. Um. So and then Kevin Steen's coming in. I mean, you know, what have we said about Cody Island? It's kind of Ellis Island, also, where you know you you go to Cody Island first, and who knows who maybe a, a Steen Cody feud for a couple months going to revolution ends up being the thing. I mean, maybe, you know, there, there are enough big names that he hasn't faced because he's been on Cody Island mm-hmm. that you could totally book out a couple of years in the end though. Who, who knows, you yeah, know? Yeah. That's I know. when I, when I see him put some wins together, it's, you know, you got to think some, I think what's the story here, you know, other than just mm-hmm. Cody's fun, the, the, the winning, his winning ways again, you know, like there's I, plus he still leaves from time to time. You know, he still leaves from time to yeah, time. So a little bit, you know, there. Uh, one other major announcement and actually kicked off the show. So we can just talk about this and kick off the recap uh, right here. I suppose uh, it was announced at the head of the show that Hangman Page will be defending his AEW championship at winter is coming in a mere two weeks. Again, odds of him losing this are probably small, but it's a possibility. If this is a possibility, they want to mix things up with how they book their champions and, and, and do a, Potentially, if they want to do it, do a story about how Hangman, now that he is champion, learning how to be champion and retain that title, could do it here. Could do it there. Absolutely. Could do it yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. They did it there instead of uh, Battle of the Belt. So, eight minutes ago, uh, as of this recording, AEW released a picture of Cody's back. Oh. And uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of want to see what it's going to look like tomorrow. But uh, yeah, they're picking all sorts of stuff out of it. Clearly, there's like some some burnt off skin, not quite supreme levels, but then that was a, an entirely different situation. Yes, looks pretty gnarly. He's probably going to be hurting in the morning. Oh, he's probably hurting right now. Probably, yeah. Um, 
So anyways, uh, yeah, so that opened up the show. Hangman comes out to sit at commentary for the opening bout. Brian Danielson versus Allen Five Angels from the Dark Order. Ooh. And uh, this was, uh, yeah, right? That one on his, his right, kind of his, sh- his, his shoulder blade and below. That looks like mm-hmm. it sucks. Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah. It looks pretty gnarly. And that, that's a bit melty right there. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, so this is a this is a fun enough match. It, uh, it it was not enough for Danielson to get the uh, the running uh, knee strike victory. No, he got that, or he got he got the running knee, and then uh, he waved off. You know uh, the idea of of pinning uh, Allen Angels on the spot. Instead, he laid in some nasty Danielson stomps, kicked that head in, flexed, got him in a knee bar. Flexed in the knee bar, so good, and uh, and that was it. So he had an interview afterwards, and he said, "In two weeks at Winter Wonder Slam, you've got." Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Tony said, "Hey, in two weeks you got the title shot." And Danielson says, "It's hard to tell if that's the best Atlanta." He's talking about Allen Angels. He says, "If that's the best Atlanta got, because I just whooped his ass, and not only did I kick his head in, I'm pretty sure I snapped his MCL last week. I knocked out Colt's tooth." This week I tore Allen's MCL. Not that any of you would know what that what that is. He says next week I hear there's a Dark Order member from Long Island. I'm gonna stomp his head in too. And then in two weeks, Hangman in Dallas, home of the Cowboys. That's where I'm gonna take your AEW World Title. That's where I show the entire world that you're a one hit wonder. That's where I show the world that it's not cowboy shit. It's coward shit. Hangman gets up and uh, John Silver comes out and stops and says, Hey, listen. We all know you're not allowed to touch Danielson tonight, but I can touch Brian tonight, and that's what I'm going to go do. He runs to go get Danielson. He bails out, and he says, you think I'm going to share the ring with this joke? He's beneath me, just like you're all beneath me. And you know, Khan said, we can't touch each other today, Hangman. You'll be suspended if you do. Uh, he says, but I'd love to slap. I would love you to slap me in the face in front of all these people, but these jerks don't deserve to see it. Yeah, it's good stuff. Let's take a quick break here to get word from our sponsor, Paint Your Life. Steve, I don't know if you know mm. this about me, but holidays it kind of make me sentimental. Actually, mm. quite a bit sentimental, which is another reason I'm so happy that I got this fantastic portrait of you and me and Sid from Paint Your Life. It really ties this whole room together, and more so, it brings back some really awesome memories of our time together in the office. Yeah, man. No, I I agree. I think it's an absolutely great painting, and yeah, I kind of miss the office too, man, here and there, but uh, I'll be honest with you. uh, Sid was never in our office. Say again? That never never happened. It's fiction. You made it up. Didn't happen. Well, I guess we can choose to remember things differently, but the one thing we can agree on (sighs) is that Paint Your Life makes it easy to get custom-made, hand-painted art on your walls. You just send them a picture, and one of their world-class artists will hand-paint you a portrait at an affordable price. I mean, look at this. This incredible piece of art. I got to remember some of the best times in the history of Going It Raw, and it only took about three weeks. So if you're looking for the perfect holiday gift for someone you love or for yourself, then you got to check out Paint Your Life. This is fantastic. It really is. At PaintYourLife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word RAW to 64000. That's RAW to 64000. Text RAW to 64000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Before we get back to the show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Manscaped. So, Larson, yes, it's the holiday season, man. So it's time to start thinking about what gifts you're going to give from Santa's sack. And if you want to guarantee that the people in your life take care of their sack, then give them the gift of Manscaped, the leader in men's below the waist grooming. Yeah, their top selling performance package 4.0 has what a guy needs to keep their package in tip top shape. It includes Manscaped's lawnmower body trimmer. The best trimmer for balls, butt, or body, as well as the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer. Great products. Both great products. But let's not forget about the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to help keep your undercarriage fresh and clean. And if you order a performance package right now, you'll get two free gifts. A really comfortable pair of Manscaped boxers 
and the shed travel bag. Or if you're looking for stocking stuffers, Manscaped has you covered with shampoo, body wash, cologne, even ball wipes to help you keep your front area from getting too stanky. Whether you're shopping for your partner, dad, brother, or friendo, get them a gift they'll actually use. So make sure to hurry to get these gifts so they show up in time for the holidays. And right now, you can get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use code RAW. Again, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code RAW. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Speaking of good stuff, next, Miro promo. So he's in a, a void. Yeah. And it's just all, it's like bright. It's bright white. Bright he's, white. It's like just the, walking. that scene in the Matrix. Wasn't there a scene in the Matrix like that? Probably. I know there was a scene in Star Trek like that. Um, and so he's in this void. And this is, this is what he says. This is promo. I, I pretty much transcribed it word for word. He says, I've been here for weeks trying to figure out uh, what I should do. What does a man do when his weakness literally separates his head from his heart? Then the vision came to me. Thank you. He says, thanks to my God for showing me, for teaching me, for revealing to me what an asshole you really are. He says, the line has been drawn. The Redeemer will storm the gates of heaven. The floor will turn red. Uh, uh, He says, you pushed, uh, sorry, the truth is you pushed me out. While I was looking for love, now I will bring fear. I only have two weaknesses in life. One I will repair. The second one I will embrace. This is the word of the Redeemer. So it seems like he's... So the like inner cut in bits of his promo was was him uh, acting tormented. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really think he's in any sort of purgatory, literally. I think this is all in his mind. You oh know, sure, it's yeah. all a subjective yeah. point of view thing going on here. It's a metaphor, yeah. Yes, and it's brilliant. I love it. Miro is one of my favorite characters in all of wrestling right now. Uh, he he takes a loss that in a lot of other companies they would just kind of move on from and make it makes it really meaningful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah, it really plays with him. Uh, I love the line about uh, a weakness separating his head from his heart. So good, it's talking about his neck. It's so um, good. I love that they made that his his Achilles heel, his neck, such a major part of his anguish with God. I love that. It's so great. This promo is awesome. Uh, however, that said, what does this mean for Miro? He's he's rejecting God, and he seems elated at the prospect. He seems free from the burden of giving a shit about what God thinks. A more like terrifying this, version of Miro on the horizon. Yeah, I know. He was terrifying as it was, but now I, I dare say even more terrifying. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where his promos go from here. If he's going to be trying to show up God, if he's going to be, you know, what this whole, I mean, this is his feud basically, and and, and the rest of us are just pawns in it, which is yeah, pretty much, which pretty is much. kind I know, of awesome. It's, it's pretty yeah. interesting where, yeah, he's in a feud with God and all the wrestlers he faces, as you said, are mere pawns in this larger yeah. story. Because he's not focused on 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 Danielson, who's the guy that you know took him down. He's they are merely you know the the the, the players involved. We are uh, all chess yeah. pieces. You yeah, know? right. Yeah, in in, yeah. in in this game of chess that we they learned. are the arm of God, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, after that, we had Lee Moriarty versus CM Punk. We had MJF coming out for commentary, and God damn it, dude, it was it was almost unbearable. Like, look, I. I know MJF is uh, he he can be he can be a killer promo he can be I don't know what this shit is though because the PG punk thing is so I hate to say it it's a WWE territory now you brought up a point or maybe someone in chat brought up a point is he trying to be like the Miz yeah right I think I said that yeah is he trying the to be PG like PG punk line is such a it's like it's such a boring, lazy, like damn near cringy line. And all, I know is that a, the point, though? Is that be. the point? It could be because all of his 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 attempts at insults were lazy, not terribly creative. And as we said, we know he could do great work. He did great work last week. The second yeah. half of that promo off against punk. He was really yeah. good. Yeah. But so much of what he did on commentary and the promo bit afterwards just felt it felt uninspired. Now, whether that's an intentional move to mirror what punk said, or 
it's not. I don't know. It, it, no, it would be actually really interesting. It would be really interesting if the character MJF is so intimidated by the legend of CM Punk that he's got performance anxiety. He has a hard time getting it up in, you know, so to speak, in the promo area. Mm -hmm. And that's why his shit is just lazy or not lazy, but he can't perform right. Uh, that's a point. But at the same time, if you go back to MJF feud with Darby, uh, a lot of the stuff there was kind of lame, too. Yeah, but the whole point of that feud, I don't, I don't disagree the point of that feud was so weak. It was basically just the, the 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 feud itself was a was a motivator for MJF to have just a really killer match and to say, "Hey, I can do this," and that's that led to the punk stuff. Um, because there was zero point to that feud whatsoever. But it was just a great match. It was a really good match. Um, and yeah, I don't disagree. It's just it. I mean, that's look. I again with AEW, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. With MJF, a guy who we've seen be really good, and the same thing with Punk. A lot of people look at you know, punk story about he's he's having a hard time with guys like and not to say anything about Lee Moriarty, but Lee Moriarty, QT Marshall, like that's his thing. Having a hard time with Seidel, uh, 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 Hobbs. He's getting these wins out. He's winning. But my God, he looks wrecked after every single match. And he's learning after seven years to tr to win. And he is winning, but you understand that he is in no shape to take on the top guys yeah. because he's having such a hard time. And a lot of people, the get-go, had a hard time. I mean, just anecdotally looking at our comments, had a hard time thinking, oh, no, they're just not using him right. It, no, he's telling a damn story. Mm -hmm. And so I like to think that this MJF, like the shit with Britt Baker, and yeah, I know, she's fine with it. She tweeted out you know, that she's fine with it, whatever. It's just, it is, it's, it's so late and punk's reactions to it are also in, in line with how lazy these insults are. His reactions are, are like, man, this is the best you have. You're coming up with. So uh, I will let it play out and see if this does kick up a notch and maybe it'll be like, Hey, everybody wants the promo stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and do that. And nothing we do is really, even though people were nutting over last week's yeah, promo yeah. stuff. Yeah, pretty huge. It was, yeah, because just the expectations were there. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of good stuff. I just feel like they're doing something here. And maybe, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're not. And maybe this is just MJF now. And, and maybe it's just we can expect some laziness here. I don't know. You know, like, a, or, sorry, go ahead. My last point here. I said this last week. The reason why Kingston's stuff resonated so much more with me is that he had some legitimate gripe with Punk, stuff that Punk couldn't come back with because he's been a prick in the locker rooms. Um, And the thing about MJF is that he doesn't have that same history with Punk, mm -mm. and so nothing he can say about Punk really is going to stick. Not and maybe, really. maybe there's just not much material there for him to work with. I don't know. That's all I, I mean, saying he looks like he's on meth and he's tired. It's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. And was, so I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, it was, it was, it was complete tangent. Um, I texted you this, but then, uh, Guillermo from what we do in the shadows is in a Geico commercial. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gizmo. Gizmo. It was pretty great. It was pretty great. I was really surprised. <laughs> uh, yeah. anyways, this match was really good. Uh, Lee Moriarty, Wearing the uh, MF Doom mask out to the ring he is great, um, and yeah, this the, the, you know the, these punk matches, they they fall into a template, but they're advancing a story, and therefore they're not getting old. You know, match after mm -hmm. match, he's trying his damnedest, but he's he's kind of lucking into victories to a certain extent. He's eking out wins, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah, down yeah, the yeah. stretch especially, Lee was wrecking him. He was like punks going he for was. a Pepsi twist. Lee ducks it, hits one of his own, mm -hmm, puts him yeah. in a Gargano escape. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and like he, Punk hits a Rana, Moriarty rolls through for a cover. Punk hits a cross body, Moriarty rolls through for a cover. It's like Punk's throwing what he can at, at, at Lee Moriarty, but Lee has an answer for everything seemingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. That, that, uh, that uh, false finish there just before the actual finish looked like three. <laughs> 
here <laughs> when when Lee hit that move. Oh, that kind of twisting and, neck breaker type deal. Yeah, and he, and he pins Punk. Punk barely squeaked out of that. That I for like, you know, I I did never I never really thought that Lee was gonna win this, but that damn near had me. It really did. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that was really that close. was. So close. Yeah, it was really close. So uh, Moriarty goes for a suplex. Punk escapes, gets him in the kind of like scorpion death drop position, powers him up on his shoulders, hits the GTS to get the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really fun match. Yeah. And afterwards, boy, MJF, that was a good boy. That was a good match. MJF grabs the mic, starts walking down the ramp. It's like, hey, Punk, I'm proud of you. Takes a lot of balls to, be the, to claim to be the best in the world when you struggle to beat QT and Lee Moriarty. Says, I guess the only thing you're the best at is trying to get in Britt Baker's pants. Again, it's just, and it's like all referencing a thing that Punk did after one of the recent shows where he comes out in, in Brit's jacket, you know? Mm, yeah. Like if yeah. you weren't at the show oh, or you yeah. were paying attention to Twitter, it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, my, yeah, I, I, I actually, I, we were not on the same page there. I, I just took it from like Punk saying, you know, Britt Baker is the. Oh, the, is the pillar the, that is the, is the pillar. pillar now. I guess I could be it too. I yeah. But no, what you're Twitter. saying t- could totally be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and he says. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. He says punks. You look unamused, which is how Brit would look if you two were in the bed. It's just, ugh. and then uh, so you could take for you could take over here for punk if you want to. Yeah, he just, well, he calls him a one pump chump. He's yeah. not CM Punk. You're one pump chump. Yeah. And uh, uh, punk says, you know, you can talk all you want about me struggling against Lee and QT. They're both better than you, and you know it. He says, how about this though? You shut up, I'll shut up. Bring your needle dick in here, and I'll kick your ass to Long Island. So MJF says, you know what, man, I'm the spark to a flame you haven't had since 2011. I'll show you what a real pro looks like when I win the uh, Dynamite Diamond Battle. So that's coming back next week. Yeah. The Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal, Battle Royale. Next week in Long Island, I'm among fans that appreciate me. I'll be better than Piper in Portland, Brett in Canada, Punk in Chicago. And Punk is laughing his ass off at the prospect of all that. He says, you're laughing. He says, but I'll be in the bird with people chanting my name. Speaking of loud, you must have brought your dog. I heard him yipping in the back. If I were you, I wouldn't bring Larry around here anymore because if you do, I'm going to put him to sleep. That sets Punk off. He comes at MJF. Wardlow comes out, steps between them, and the ref gets the refs get between them mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just, God, I hope they don't stray into actually doing anything with Larry the dog. No, I'd, I'd be very surprised if that, if that were to happen. Same. Uh, after that, we had a Britt Baker interview. Um uh, she says that she's she's pretty upset that Tony Khan made her wrestle Riho, and now Riho has a title shot. Uh, Tony Schiavone asks Jamie Hayter why she wasn't at Friendsgiving, and she says because she's having one of the best matches in the TBS tournament, which is a fact. That match was great. Uh, Britt then kind of says under her breath, which you lost, and Jamie says, well, remember the last time you faced Thunder Rosa in a really great match? You lost that too. So Britt says, well, let's not focus on the past. We've gotten together. We've got this. We've made things right. We're a team again. And it says uh, Jamie is going to take on Riho next week. And if there's anything left of Riho after that match, then she can have her title shot. Yeah, I like when they start sniping at each other. Britt says free therapy for everybody here. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Uh, so for some reason, after that, Adam Cole came out for commentary. I thought I missed something, but apparently I didn't. Yeah, because so my TNT stream froze. And so I didn't see him actually roll out to commentary, Same. but he was there because the next match was going to be a Wardlow match. Yeah, uh, but I thought since George Cassidy came out, it was going to be yeah. Statlander versus Ruby. So he comes out, Cole attacks him, the Bucks attack. They do his slow super kick gimmick thing, and then they actually you know mess him up. The super kick, and then yeah. The, yeah, and then the best friends uh, run them off with chairs. Yeah. So, yeah, Uh, after that, we have a Tony Nese video package. He's talking about his TNT title shot against Sammy Guevara. He says, finally, we're going to put that TNT title title around a premier athlete's waist. And if you think what I did to you last week with the ribs, just wait till uh, I guess it's going to happen at Rampage. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That'll be a good match. Yeah. After that, we had Wardlow versus AC Adams. Didn't last very long. Three power bombs from Wardlow to get the win. And afterwards, Sean Spears just comes in and blasts this dude with a chair for seemingly no reason. Raises up <laughs> Wardlow's arm. Uh, oh. They celebrate. After that, we had a Penta and Pack interview. Apparently, Phoenix, I think they said he was too injured to travel, I believe was what how they put it. Is that what it was? Okay. Because um, it's, it's Penta and Pack versus FTR on Dynamite on Friday, I believe. Okay. Yes. Or sorry, Rampage on, on Friday. 
Yeah, and then uh, the following day. So was Rampage already taped or no? Yeah, it's probably taped tonight. Oh, oh yeah, it probably is, huh? Because on Sabado, we've got Triple Mania. Yeah, which so. is Lucha Brothers versus FTR for the Triple A Tech. Right. Titles. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, uh, that's be good so Pent says, time for some spo- Oh no, go ahead. I thought I was skipping ahead there. Go ahead. So so Pent says uh, they would have loved to have defeated FTR twice, uh, but since they uh, hurt Phoenix, found the best al- ally. I could in Pack, and then uh, he, Pax asked, "Can you wrestle?" Because he has an eye patch on. Yeah. After getting spit uh, by in the face with mist by Malachi, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm good to fight." And he just goes, yeah. looks at the camera, goes, "Look into my eye. Look into my eye." I I know that it would mess up his his like vision and everything, his depth perception, but he looks like a total badass. When he does. <laughs> when that totally patch. Does. I mean, he does normally, but put that eye patch on him. Oh man. Yeah. Look into my eye. All right. Let's talk about gun club versus sting and Darby Allen. Does Austin gun owe, owe Darby Allen some money? Because Darby fucked that dude up <laughs> that's twice, in twice two weeks. now, twice in two weeks. Now he's launched himself at this dude. Full speed. Oh Simulating my throwing gosh. Caution to the wind. Yeah. And destroy. Oh my him. gosh. Yeah, it was nuts. Gun Club coming into this undefeated. Yeah, undefeated no more. No more because you got Sting with that crazy ass uh that face paint. I love great. I love when Sting starts putting on the weird Darby Allen face paint. It had like some weird cheekbone. I don't know if this was particularly inspired by anything that they mentioned or not, but uh man, he looked creepy as shit. He looked like he got face apped. It was great. It was fantastic. It was um, fantastic. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. This was a really fun match, too. This is a pretty rad match it was here. Pretty, it was fun. It so, was. in the end, Sting gets uh, Colton in the death lock. Billy, distract- Billy starts to come in, and Sting's like, hey, get him out of here. And so Austin breaks the the, the submission because Aubrey Edwards is, uh, is, is, is distracted by uh, Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn, yeah. Darby hits a suicide dive on Austin that just completely destroys him. Just it's so fast. It's like he added an extra ten miles per hour somehow. Right. It's crazy. The ref is then Aubrey gets distracted by that. Billy comes in, hits the famouser. Colton struggles to get over there, but gets the pin. Only gets two on it. Make sure his dad's finish is protected. Yeah. And then Darby dives uh, back out at Billy Gunn just a mile a minute. But you could do that with Billy Gunn because he's pure granite. And then Darby more or less bounces right off Billy Gunn. Almost he lands does, yeah, on his Yeah, exactly. Feet. Like he, yeah, he that's bounces what's gonna off and does like a half turn almost lands on his feet. Yeah, exactly. So then, And uh, then yeah. uh, Sting hits a death drop, I think, on Colton. Yeah, for the yeah, yeah after Darby mistake. hits him with a stunner. It was a fun yeah. match. It was a surprisingly pretty damn fun match. And the crowd popped when we had the, the Billy Gunn-Sting showdown. Early on so about. hold on, I want to see what the uh, tag rankings are now. Okay, you, while you do that, I'll go over this Chris Jericho interview. Uh, he's asked uh, about helping Eddie Kingston last week on Rampage, and he goes, uh, "I didn't, I didn't come to Eddie's aid last week. I wasn't out there to help Eddie. I was out there to take out Daniel Garcia in 2.0." And he said their name. They're there. They attack Chris Jericho, throw him into a road case, into a garage door, and then Matt Lee blasts Jericho in the head with the chair. Yeah, Jericho looked legit fucked up, but he's probably just selling really good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here we've got the uh, the rankings. This is kind of interesting because we're looking at the solo men's rankings here. Um, Kenny's ranked number two, even though because he's like eight, two, and one, but like yeah, he's yeah. not going to have a. Yeah. Uh, Scorpio Sky is actually ranked number three at 12 and one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to put him in line for a, a TNT title shot, but that was kind of interesting, I thought, for a single. Thing. That'd be a, Jungle Boy's third, next and then Mirror's third shot at him. him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, over in the tag uh, rankings, we've got, of course, uh, I think this match is happening at, well, I guess they haven't announced it, but Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus have a match. Yeah, they're, 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 they're next. They're contender, yeah, for Lucha Brothers, yeah. yeah. And then after them is uh, FTR, but they just had their match. And then uh, after that is Gun Club. with They're, they're 9-0. and oh. Well, now they're 9-1. Now they're 9-1. and one. So they might drop. Who's next? Mathematically, that still puts them, I think, above Santana Ortiz, who are fifteen and three. Hmm. I mean, they they kind of they kind of weigh mm-hmm. things based on strength of competition too. So, hey, Santana, they're, those are the next dudes. By the way, those guys are getting those tag titles. Yeah, I next. hope so. Probably. At, I hope so. Maybe hope even so. at Revolution. I don't know. Uh, so this next bit was great. So Taz was out on commentary. He was he was talking about how Team Taz has the advantage in the uh, Dynamite uh, Battle Royal happening next week because. Three members of Team Taz are going to be in the in the match, and he says because of that they have a hundred and twenty five percent chance of winning 
that dynamite diamond ring because the numbers don't lie. Taz must have just seen the Steiner Math promo because he seems so tickled at making the reference to Steiner Math. He seems so he was, happy with himself, he and it's like, dude, to laugh the whole time, and it was great. They're doing it on NXT every single week right now because the dude's nephew is there. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, man. These Team Taz like uh, encounters are always the most awkward, hilarious things. So Leo Rush comes out and uh, and says, "Taz, you're a commentator, so you should know me." And Taz is like, "Yeah, yeah." And he's like, it's literally your job. Uh, no, get to the point. He starts yelling at him. He's like, and if that's the case, you should know I've had the odds stacked against me my whole career. Yeah, okay. What are you saying here? He's like, okay, it's crazy for me to hear you say that you have your team has a 100% chance to win this. Okay, what you saying? Because you're saying I have 0% chance. All right, cool. Okay. So I'm a fighter. Deep down, you know that I'm a fighter. These people know I'm a fighter. I won't be going down without a fight, even if I have a 1% chance. And Taz says, hey. You might as well just retire. Take a look at this. And then Dante approaches him awkwardly. Yeah. Starts sort of like mumbling or 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 shaking his head like he was almost like apologetic. You know. He was shy he was shy Ronnie at the in the in that moment. Yeah. Like, oh, and then and then Ricky Starks kind of uh kind of runs out after him. He saunters out. Yeah. And they go off. The he does the shoulder pass. lean. Yeah. yeah. On, on Dante, and then Dante goes back and he starts high-fiving people like he just did something. I know, I know. I wonder if he got <laughs> some more Are you proud of me, hook. guys? Are you proud of me, guys? Yeah. Because I just, like, walked towards Leo Rush. <laughs> uh, yeah. After that, we had a Jade Cargill, Mark Sterling promo. So uh, Mark Sterling congratulates Thunder Rosa, says, but uh, she thinks she's got a chance against, uh, or asked, but do you think you really have a chance against Jade? So Jade says uh, they put out a challenge for Rampage. It was answered by Thunder Rosa, Thunder Rosa student um, uh, Janai Kai, I think is the name. I uh, didn't catch it. And then Thunder Rosa steps in and she says, you know, Chris Jericho is not going to be on commentary in Rampage. And they asked me to fill in for any match I wanted to. And I picked your match. Ooh, yeah. Against my student. Yeah. Uh, so, and then she just started like yelling in Spanish. <laughs> so good. I love when she does so that. It's good. my favorite thing. It reminds me of uh, growing up as a child with a mom who speaks Spanish. <laughs> Whenever I'd get in trouble, I'd hear a lot of stuff just like that. Uh, after that, we had Chris Tatlander, Chris Tatlander versus Ruby Soho. Hell of a match. My, my only complaint about this is, man, give him five, seven more minutes because this was just all really smooth, really, really good, good stuff. It was really good. Yeah. That bit where Ruby hit a poison Ron in a basement Ron oh, on Stalin. And, and her reaction to not getting the win there was fantastic. Because it really should. That should be a finish right there, man. You hit a poison Ron and then one of those awesome. I love the basement Ron. Oh, I do too. You just slam somebody's you head into the mat. I can see somebody's head on the mat. But I, like, oh, I did like that because so Statlander kicks out. So Ruby goes for her finish. Statlander blocks it, looks for her finish. But then Ruby block, reverses that into a roll up to get the win. But it's like, all right, yeah. maybe she kind of set up the roll-up finish by hitting those two Ranas before, you know? Yeah, right, right, yeah. Like, it makes yeah. sense. No, that was uh, that was really good stuff. So we got Ruby Soho versus uh, Jay... No, no, I'm sorry, Nyla Ruby Rose. Soho's against Nyla Rose. Because Nyla comes out and attacks. Comes out right afterwards. Uh, Ruby, while Vicky distracts Chris Statlander on the rap, ramp, mm -hmm. uh, Statlander eventually runs back out to the ring and, and chases off Nyla. So I, I'm kind of thinking at this point is going to be Ruby versus Jade, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're thinking too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be that's, that should be really good stuff. That should be really good stuff. And then that match is going to happen in uh, the first episode of the TBS thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then we had our main event, Andrade versus Cody. This match was nuts even before the table T spot. T Pain was there to make it even more nuts. Awesome. Of course, Cody's Cody's friend. T Pain, and, and uh, he's also on that uh, that uh, go, go big show go. as well. Yeah. well. yeah, the go big show. Uh, so uh, Andrade makes his entrance, and he's carrying a knife, and he hands it to Jose, yeah. and Jose puts it in like a bag that's full of weapons and stuff. Stuff. And yeah. then Cody makes his entrance. Andrade runs up to attack Cody while he's hap that's happening. Arn slips off the stage, turns into a turtle. <laughs> Jose goes up and starts brawling with Arn. Yeah, and then he Al helps Arn out in order to brawl with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Andrade and Cody take the fight to the crowd. They come back ringside, a uh, bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, Cody goes and hugs T Pain. 
gets a chair from. He starts using that on Andrade. I like this. They didn't wait till the end to do this. Andrade hits Cody with a low blow. Why didn't do that when he ran run up to the stage? Mm-hmm. Like really, once you get in the ring, low blow. Yeah, yeah. Street fights, no DQ matches, no holds barred. It all should be Immediate race to blow. hit. Yeah, race, race to kick a guy in the dick. Yeah, right in absolutely. The front area. Right in the Agreed. front area. I was kind of shocked. It was so funny because number one, it seemed like Cody was molting uh, when uh, when they came back from the crowd. Uh, in retrospect now, because he had like some really weird flaky shit going on in his back. And, you know, the speculation on our part is that it's some sort of fire retardant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, somebody here in chat. Yeah. Yeah. Said perhaps Vaseline or something like that, uh, which could work at all. Did you uh, when you were a kid, did you ever put your finger in Vaseline and then light it on fire? No. Because it would just be it would just be on fire. and You can't feel anything. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I did that once or twice. No, I, I never did that with. I didn't do that with Vaseline. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Oh, but you you did light yourself on fire. Otherwise, you get some Bacardi one fifty one self immolation in the Larson. You get family. some Bacardi one fifty one in the palm of your hand. Okay, yeah, and you can light that, and it is it like it's pretty much instantaneous. You know, with a matter yeah. of seconds, it, it it burns itself up. Doesn't hurt at all. Don't cool. do it, but yeah, don't do any of what we're talking don't about. Do that. Don't do that. But I didn't do that. I'm not gonna was, get. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was booze. Okay, yeah. I just did it when I was like, I don't know, 12 or so. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, Cody's molting. Uh, after they they brawl throughout the crowd, they go back in the ring. And like we said, like the crowd immediately when Cody's music hits at the beginning. Boo this man. Well, it was like you hear like a sharp, loud boos, but then also a sharp, loud cheers, like right on the tail of it. Well, they were going through the crowd. There was loud Cody chants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, after brawling in the crowd, they go back to the ring. Andre goes to his bag of gimmicks and hits Cody with a laptop and then grabs a steel chair, whacks him in the head. And I'm like, why is Cody not bleeding right now? Give it time. Cause this seems like a time when he'd bleed. And it's funny. Cause even Taz was echoing that. He's like, Hey, Oh, that's when I'm Andrade surprised he- dropped him on the ring steps. Oh yeah. The ring steps bit too. I was like, Oh, for sure. This is going to, because it's like really sharp. And Taz like, why ain't he bleeding yet? And they're like, Oh, I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll get to that. Yeah. Sure enough, a little bit later, it happened. that happened. Cody hits Andrade in the balls. Crowd boos that, but then they also cheer it again. Weird. Cody tries a Cody cutter. He gets pushed off, though. Uh, Cody backdrops Andrade onto the expo. They go to the outside. He backdrops Andrade in the exposed pavement there. Uh, at that point, Cody is thoroughly busted open. He goes under the ring, or he goes to look under the ring, gets a sledgehammer, Does decides not to use that. Gets out the wonderful golden shovel. The most obvious blade metaphor there is. I know. Andrade hits a fun splash. Uh, oh, wait. But before no, that before happens, that, uh, Jose runs down with no shirt on. Jack? And he's no shirt. Ripped. <laughs> they're like, they're like, okay, Jose, you go back out there. With the taser. But take your shirt off first. Take your shirt off first. And then he's like just loked. And they're like, geez, dude, why aren't you doing that more often? Yeah. Yeah. Book so, this guy in some matches. I know. Golly. So Cody yeah. hits him with a shovel. And then Andrade yeah. takes him out with a splash off the top. He hits double knees in the corner with a chair over Cody's face. That gets him a two. So Andrade gets the table, puts it in the ring, kind of sets up the corner, and hip tosses Cody through it. And then he puts another table in the ring. He puts Cody on it. He goes up top. Cody gets off the table, sweeps out Andrade's legs. He's looking for a superplex. Andrade fights Cody off. So Cody's kind of like bent over, leaning over the table. So Andrade mm-hmm. looks like he's going to go for a moonsault. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, uh, Cody sweeps his legs out from him again. Uh, 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 Brandy runs to the ring. She douses the table in lighter fluid. There's a ton of lighter fluid on it. Lights it on fire, and the Cody hits a reverse suplex through it to get the win. Yeah, yeah. And Cody, being a pro, not one to put Andrade's face into flames, mm-hmm. took the brunt of that f- flaming table on his back. Yeah, it was it was it was great because he was still on fire when he was trying to pin him, and Andrade's like putting it out. Again, pro Andrade. I love to see that. You know what, man? I don't need to know who took the brunt of the fire, who took the brunt of the move. Cody's supposed to win this. They did a crazy spot for our entertainment. They almost got burned alive. They did get burned alive. And uh, and 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 you just let the finish go down and make sure everybody is as safe as they as possibly safe. can yes, be. Exactly. 
Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so if our Twitch live crowd can please load up some awesome highlighted messages, uh, some questions for us, that would be appreciated. Uh, I'm going to throw this out really quick because I'm putting up the AEW thread right now because I'm I'm late on all that stuff. I promise to get better. Uh, but I wanted to say if, uh, uh, if you enjoy going in raw, you want to listen to the show ad free, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson for $5 a month. You can get the audio of the show ad free in your favorite podcast app. That's probably not Spotify. I haven't checked. I need to check that to see if they're doing that yet. Um, but you also get the bonus episodes we do every single week. Uh, if you want to pay a little bit less, $3 a month just for the show itself, no bonus episodes, you can go to goinginraw.supercast.tech. Correct. And you can get that there. I want to say thanks to all the patrons, YouTube channel members, and of course our Twitch subs yep. for helping to support Going In Raw. Thank Earlier so today in our NXT recap, uh, uh, we gave a shout out specifically to them and named off all the latest patrons and YouTube channel members. So thanks so much thank for that. You, we thank appreciate you. Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you. Rocco here says Sting's uh, face paint freaked me out at certain moments. He seemed to be in some some trance, the same trance that I get in when I see a cheeseburger. Oh man, I love a good cheeseburger. I know that trance well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just Joe. So this was great because I just looked it up. He says, "Did you guys see the promo poster for Winter is Coming?" It says uh, uh, Wangman versus Danielson. So the H looks kind of like a w. a w because the the middle part of the H goes up like that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the Wangman. Oh wow! Against. Great question here from Die Hard Homer. If given the chance to say the F word one time at WB and AEW, which wrestlers get that honor? I feel like Chuck should. Has he got to say shit on a show yet? Because he really nope. wanted to. He really wanted to. So give Chuck I, that honor. I'd say let Roman say it. He says, Brock, I'm going to fucking smash you. They're, They're like, whoa. They're whoa. Good. <laughs> that was nuts. They're I can't believe you said that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, fuck you, says Spotify <laughs> year and wrap up. Said you guys were my number one podcast. I listened to over 240 wow. episodes. Of that's, that's a lot. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, so fuck much. you. Thank Appreciate you so that. much. Uh, Nick Kyle says, Power Rank top five moments in wrestling that involve fire. Uh, I know one that will not be on there, and it's one I witnessed firsthand. Definitely not going on there. Yeah, because all that stuff we were talking about is like being safe and professional. That was not that. That was terrifying. Oh, man. Uh, uh, another one that won't make it is when the, the build to SummerSlam 98 – when uh, Austin was like walking up the ramp and they did that really weak limp dick flaming flames going yeah, up the, yeah, the ramp yeah, to Austin. Yeah, yeah, He's like, yeah. oh man, yeah. what is this right here? I just need to step three feet to the side and I'll be just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Undertaker you, catching on fire. Oof, that was bad. That was awful. That was bad. We're just thinking of bad ones now. Yeah, I know. Not good ones. Oh, yeah. uh, good ones. I guess it was safe when Kane let, uh, let JR on fire. That actually wasn't good. That was horrible. My God. My God, I'm on fire. Because they, they overdub like concerned people's voices. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Kane. What are you doing? No. No, don't Stop do that. Stop it, Kane. Stop it. It's actually really bad. It was really bad. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, I'm trying to think of actual good ones. I mean, there's been Inferno matches. I mean, like the first, usually those are pretty lame. Um, yeah. The first time hey, shout I, out to Jim Ross, by the way. Yeah, I'm he was an on commentary to tonight. He's doing, yeah. he's going, doing some uh, some treatment. Yeah. Um. So wish him well. Um, like the first time I saw the Dudleys powerbomb someone through a flaming table, I was like, wow, I didn't know they did that in wrestling. Oh, Ed, thank you. Yeah, who is this? Uh, a big step says uh, Mick Foley and Edge spears through the table. That was great. That was rad. That was I like the fiend burned be, being burned alive. That was pretty rad, to be honest with you. That was there was a lot of fire in the Thunderdome that day. There was a lot of oh, fire in the man. Thunderdome that day. That's true. Uh, Ev gifted a sub to Cedric. Thank you so much. Uh, Dang him, Q with Fightful Select reporting. WWE has interest in re-signing Kyle O'Reilly. Would you rather him remain Von Wagner's young boy or reunite with Cole and Fish in <sighs> AEW? Dude, just go to AW. Just go to AW. I just, I, I don't know. Like, what you're gonna wait until you're, you're like making a Von Wagner's young boy in order to like say, hey, we'll do great things with you. I just, I honestly think that WWE's thing is just like, hey, we'll overpay you. 
Stick around. What does it matter what we're going to do with you? I mean, we'll then, overpay. Then you. If you're over, if you're getting overpaid, you're first on the list to get released. That is true as well. Yeah, that's true as well. Uh, yeah. CK Merce, what do you think of the idea that Wardlow will win the Diamond Ring next week and likely turn on MJF? Ooh. That's a promising idea. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's good. Wardlow needs to wrestle more. He does. He needs to wrestle more. I love that match where he literally murdered uh, uh, Wheeler Yuta. Uh, David Matushek says, just, should MJF ever limit the way his promo skills work? I don't know exactly what that means. You know, I feel like he MJF could benefit from being given less time. That's true. Efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, they give him a lot of time. They usually give him a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Fear and Loathing says, Larson, bring it up. Bacardi 151 reminded me when I was 18 and shot it into my eyes. Ow. Mm-hmm. Ow. Ow. Yeah. That, that sounds sucks. horrible. That sounds awful. That sounds terrible. Oh, no. Oh, man. Huh. Maggie says, Mr. President, I must tender my resignation as I cannot support your vacationing on Cody Island. Thank you. Wow. It's a short vacation. You I don't reject know that. you. I you don't reject. Know that. I reject your resignation, Madam Vice President. No resignations to be had here. I got to rethink that, man. I can't lose my vice president. She's the best. Uh, let's see here. Oh, great question. Hurricane VC says, what do you think Cody's Spotify wrapped top five songs are this year? Well, Dawkins into the fire. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Why am I blanking on songs about? Uh, just gotta be a song about. Oh, there you go. Burning for You by Blue Blue Oyster Cult. Good, That's good. good. Thank you. That was from Lord. Good. Uh, Lord. What is this? Lord Naroku also says Ring of Fire, Johnny Cash. Good. Um, yeah, I'm proud to be American. That's good. Zondo. <laughs> I'm proud to be an American, not I'm proud to be American. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am a real. Yeah, I don't know. What other songs do you think are on this thing? I'm looking for other songs uh, with fire in the title. Is there a song with the word liberty in it? I'm sure there is. Probably are, huh? We Didn't Start the Fire? That's good. Oh, that's good. That's more an Andrade song, though. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, yeah. Is Judas on his playlist? <laughs> does he have some Fozzie on there? There you go. Yeah, there's some songs with liberty in the title, too. Let's see here. Uh, quote the Raven says, remember when Kane's pyro went off as tanker, as taker, tanker, taker was turning on the lights. Mm hmm. Where he did his hand thing instead of the lights coming up. Flame. Went oh, up yeah. Face. I guess you could go like this. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Rocco says, I was rolling my eyes at Cody's entrance. Then by the end, I was just appreciating crispy Cody for a second. I thought Brandy was turning heel. Yeah, that crossed yeah. my mind too. Maybe she did, but he still won. <laughs> she was like, "That was meant like you went into the fire. You were supposed to lose. You were that. supposed to lose, but you won. All right. Yeah. So I'm just gonna act like I that was you know for that you. was all planned and yeah, and that was for your benefit solely and not anybody else's. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Zondo says Kyle shows up in AEW. Do they address the Adam Cole feud? If so, how? They probably have some throwaway line. Yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. A throwaway line is good. Uh, Hunter V, hey, friendos, AEW show is amazing. Met the former intern on the elevator wearing a Larson shirt. That's great, hey, Hunter V. You yeah. met the intern. He was wearing your crazy, uh, yeah, yeah, your face shirt. Yeah. Uh, Champ asks, which wrestler do you think would be the best bartender? Matt Seidel looks like a bartender. I could see that. He looks like a bartender. He looks like a friendly bartender. He does. He does. You know who'd be a terrible bartender? Dante Martin. He seems so awkward. He doesn't talk. Yeah, I know. He, he just stands there like, you have to be a personable guy. You do. You know. And would Taz be a good bartender? 
<laughs> hey, what did you say? What'd you want? Never heard of it. What's an old fashioned? <laughs> Get some. Everybody knows an old fashioned. Uh, Grass says, I love all the factions, but it is annoying when they all leave people alone to get jumped. Which faction do you see disbanding next? Oh, J Ray says, Seamus was a bartender. Oh, I'm sure a bunch of those wrestlers are probably uh, wrestlers. Scooter, I already read your question. Um, what faction do you see disbanding next? I don't know. They don't really seem to be that uh, that eager to break up factions just for the sake of breaking them up, you know? Uh, that being said, Pinnacle. Yeah, Pinnacle's not even... Is it, either them or Inner a, Circle. They're barely a thing as it is. Pinnacle's barely even a thing. Oh, Samoa Joe. Who said that? Dr. Lipkin oh, said Samoa wow. Joe. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, be remember great. he did that spot from the bar? Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Uh, Talk about people who are personable. Oh, my God. I know, right? Anyways, I think that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Tomorrow's Thursday. It's a heavy streaming day at noon. We've got Pacific. We've got NXT UK. Apparently, Johnny Saint came back last week. Yeah, that's shocking news. Which is shocking news. I thought he was dead. I thought Sid slimy Sid Scala killed him. But no, apparently not. Apparently not. So we got that going on. And then we got the numbers don't lie. John Cena coming up at 4 p.m. Pacific for and exclusive. Five, we got Smash Zone here on the. Tour. We're gonna watch some Wrestling Society X. Been a while since. Probably I've seen gonna any watch of that. some. Yeah, probably gonna watch some. Press your luck. Yeah, more game um, shows, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, I wouldn't mind putting on some Match Game. Good, maybe. Good. I don't know. Good, all good. Yeah, Family Feud is my favorite. Yeah, though. that one's great. Dude, that's my favorite. I, I actually quite like Press Your Luck too. Yeah, pre- yeah. What are we gonna do over on a three and a half? Three and is that what we decided? That's and tough. Half. Three and a half. That's tough. tough. I'm going over. Okay, I'm going over. You going over huge or just a little bit? Well, it's a binary situation, man. Oh, you mean in channel points? Yeah. Oh yeah, big time, man. Okay. Big time. I gotta save some for Beyond Belief. How many do you have right now? Ooh, dating game. Oh yeah. <gasps> we should watch the dating game. Oof. How many channel points do I have? Probably yeah. not a lot. Let me check. We got all the uh, events this weekend, too. Save, I know. Save those channel I know. points for. Man, I, gotta, I have a small betting budget. I've got. Uh, John, oh, I've got 13,000. Oh, that's not bad. John the Drummer says, what time is Smash Zone? Be 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 Eastern. Right here at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.